Good Sunday morning, North Georgia. Meteorologist Andrew Wilson here for the weekly weather update. It has been a beautiful day out there so far. Now, we have had some cooler conditions. That's been the only catch. Temperatures have been out there sitting in the 30s. Uh, but we rose into the 40s pretty quick here across the region and now we're rising into the 50s as of 11 a.m. here on Sunday. Now we love to do these updates typically on Sundays and Wednesdays. Uh, Sundays typically at 11 a.m. and then on Wednesdays at 2.30. Now the past couple of weeks we had to take off for a bit but we're back on and ready to keep you updated here on what you can expect for your week ahead and kind of get you a little prepared for the week ahead. So let's talk about what we have here over this next week. Again, first of all, we like to start off with what's happening right now because some of you are watching live. You can watch this at a later date though, and if you are watching at a later time, know that you can still get a lot of the more relevant information um, that you're looking for here within the update. So a lot of blue sky overhead. You see that out towards uh, Midtown. Beautiful shot there. The airport, similar conditions, everything moving smoothly. Obviously nothing to slow you down. The King and Queen Towers and even all the way up towards Blue Ridge. Look at how packed downtown is. It is full of people out there trying to enjoy some of that nice weather that we have outside. Temperatures, they've rebounded nicely up towards Blue Ridge. It's still in the 40s, probably upper 40s. Sitting at 51 though, down towards the uh, Can uh, the Canton area, 53 in Marietta, 51 in Rome and in uh, Carrollton. And then you see 51 here in Atlanta while down towards the Grange. They're right now sitting in the mid 50s. So these temperatures today, they're going to be right around to maybe just below average for this time of year. We've been kind of bouncing up and down from being above average to below average over the last uh, 30 days. Kind of a good mix of everything. You see the above average temperatures we had there for the end of February. Took a bit of a dip there for the early part of March. And then in March, we've had a lot of ups and downs here throughout the temperatures uh, throughout the month. Satellite radar showing that we have the sunshine overhead, but off to our west, you see all that cloud cover that they're dealing with in Mississippi, Arkansas, Louisiana, stretching into Texas and Oklahoma. That's all heading our way, and that's what is going to be greeting us as we head throughout tonight and then into tomorrow morning. So be ready for some of that cloud cover. It's also going to be a little bit breezy this afternoon. Nothing like yesterday. Now, the National Weather Service ended up, uh, at least from what we were doing yesterday morning, I didn't see a wind advisory uh, issued, but it was very windy yesterday. For today, it's not going to be as windy. We're going to have still gusts up to 20 to 25 miles per hour, even at times, but sustained winds will be calmer. Tonight, though, the winds are going to pick back up, so we do have a wind advisory in place for this evening. That's going to be from midnight all the way till 2 p.m. on Monday, but it looks like the winds could actually stay stronger throughout Monday afternoon and into Monday evening even. So they may end up extending this wind advisory. Just know that that's a possibility here. For right now, though, it is expected to be through 2 p.m. You see all those counties shaded in tan. Well, that's where we have 15 to 25 mile per hour sustained winds possible. Gusts up to 35 miles per hour. Know that it will still be windy in Atlanta, just not within the um, qualifications of a wind advisory being put into place. So here's what the wind gusts will do for today. Again, going to be gusting pretty good at times, but nothing too serious. We move into tonight, though, and into tomorrow morning. By 8 a.m. on Monday, we're talking about gusts up to 30 miles per hour, maybe in Canton, 34 in Blairsville. That could be enough to topple a couple of trees and possibly cause a few uh, isolated power outages. And that is going to continue to be possible throughout the day on Monday and into Monday evening. This is 11 p.m. on Monday. See, this is why I said they may end up extending or issuing another wind advisory because we could have 40 mile per hour gusts in Dalton at 11 p.m. on Monday and then 36 in Blairsville, 33 in Canton. That's some pretty strong wind out there. Now the winds are going to stay fairly strong throughout Monday night and into Tuesday morning, but throughout the day Tuesday, we're going to have our next chance for rain move in. And as that's happening, we're going to start to see these winds kind of chill out a little bit. Forecast track shows that rain moving in. First of all, let's get through today. Again, temperatures there are going to be in the mid 60s for highs, a lot of sunshine out there. You see the cloud cover move in over overnight tonight and then into tomorrow morning. Our temperatures are going to fall back down into the 40s. Then we move throughout the day here on Monday. Temperatures are going to be rising into the 60s, a lot of cloud cover. We move into Tuesday. This is Tuesday at 7.30 a.m. Showers and storms move in from our west. It's not looking like anything severe with this, but we could get a few rumbles of thunder. You see that uh, it's going to be pretty heavy rainfall even at times possible, especially for areas closer to the Alabama border. The rain's going to be breaking up, though, as it continues to push east. Still some heavy pockets, just not as widespread heavy rainfall there by the time we head into Tuesday around 12.30, 1 o'clock. 
Moving on through the timeline, even by Wednesday at 3.30 a.m., a few isolated showers are possible. Just a slight change for rain on Wednesday, and then we'll see those rain changes go down for Thursday and Friday. We just did five Fridays in, the, in a row, by the way, of rain. And this Friday, it's going to be dry. It's actually also going to be gorgeous out there. Temperatures, they're expected to be rising into the upper 60s, lower 70s in some spots. So let's take a look at what the sky conditions are going to do. Again, here's that system moving through for Tuesday evening into, or for Tuesday throughout the day, rather, and then into even portions of Wednesday morning. But then Thursday and Friday, it gets off to the east. We get sunshine here in North Georgia. It's actually going to be stunning conditions. And yes, that continues on for Saturday and even into Sunday. We're going to have some nice conditions, but some cloud cover may start to build in by the end of the day there on Sunday. So how much rain do we get over the next seven days? Well, it's looking like anywhere from really about half of an inch up to an inch from much of the region. Some weather models are trying to show a little bit more, but I think the higher totals are going to be again further off towards the west. No drought, by the way, left in North Georgia. As of the Thursday update, we have no more drought, and it's been quite some time. I forget the exact date. I had it written down somewhere here um, a couple of days ago, but it was back in, I think, mid-2023, the last time that we had no drought anywhere in Georgia or no abnormally dry conditions either. That's why I'm um, counting in that those abnormally dry conditions there too, not just the moderate drought. So yeah, uh, much improved conditions across uh, Georgia and the southeast as a whole. Much of the United States really not dealing with any drought uh, other than uh, or rather exceptional drought. Uh, you know, sometimes we'll end up with big swaths of ex exceptional drought like what we had here in North Georgia here just a few months ago. Uh, but you see, we only have a tiny little dot there in southeast portions of New Mexico, kind of close to Carlsbad Caverns is where that's located. So again, we've had a lot of rainfall this month. It's really helped us improve. It's helped us get rid of the drought. Out, it helped us get rid of the abnormally dry conditions. We have had, let's see here, one, two, three days, four days that have brought an inch or more of rainfall. One of those days brought us more than two inches. That was on the 6th. And you see that we are now well ahead for rain for the month. You see that we're trending very wet there. Even uh, over the last few uh, couple weeks when it's been a little bit drier compared to how we started the month, you see that we are just staying up there because we had so much rain to start off with. We are more than three and a half inches ahead of our, our normal month to date uh, rainfall. Uh, so we've had now more than seven inches and a quarter of rain. And we're going to add a little bit more to that before the end of the month with the rain that we're going to have for Tuesday and then into early Wednesday. So again, some of our wettest days of the year have happened this month. The 1st, the 6th, and the 8th, all on the top five uh, for the board there. The 6th was the second wettest day. The wettest day we've had so far this year was uh, back, on, uh, back in January where we had two and three quarters of an inch of rain. And of course, with all this uh, wet weather we've had over the last three months, we are well ahead on rain for the year. Um, nearly by five inches, nearly five inches there. Not quite, but pretty close to it. Um, so 17.58 is how much rain we've had so far this year. Um, and again, we're going to add to it a little bit as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday. Thankfully, though, the rain that we're getting on Tuesday and Wednesday isn't going to really bring a big cool down behind it. You know, we had a, a freeze for some spots this morning. We're not expecting a freeze for anybody throughout the next seven days here in North Georgia. Temperatures they are going to hit 71 for the high there on Wednesday, 66 on Thursday, back above average there by the time we head into Friday, hitting 69, barely above average, but you can still call it that. And then 72 by the time we head into Saturday. Here's your seven day forecast looking stunning. You see the sunny sky there that we're expecting for today going to be a little bit of cloud cover moving in before the end of the day, but still a majority of today going to be stunning cloud cover for Monday. Then we have Tuesday scattered showers and storms temperatures in the lower 60s for highs. A few showers possible there Wednesday, mainly in the morning and then breaking up that cloud cover a little bit for the afternoon. And then we move into Thursday, Friday and Saturday. And man, is it going to be beautiful out there for the end of the week and into the weekend? I hope you can get out and enjoy some of that nice weather. So what can we expect beyond the seven day forecast? We're looking now from day eight through day 14 for a weather trend, the possibility of what we could see in that time frame. It's looking like we could have some above average rainfall possible. This doesn't mean rain every day, but uh, wetter than average conditions. And then also around normal temperatures, which would be upper 60s, lower 70s for this time of year. That's what it's looking like we'll have for highs as we head from day eight through day 14. Again, that's beyond the seven day forecast. That's going to be for that first full week of April. It's looking like we're going to be having uh, some wetter, but also around average uh, temperatures.
So uh, Peach State Outlook over the next three days, if you're going to be traveling across the state of Georgia, again, cloud cover is going to increase for Monday, just like us. We're going to get uh, rain chances here in North Georgia on Tuesday. Much of the state is going to be dealing with rain, and if you're not dealing with rain on Tuesday in Georgia, uh, if you're seeing one of these cities without it, they're likely going to have rain on Wednesday. That's the thing. Uh, so some spots will get that better rain chance on Wednesday, while us here in North Georgia, that we have our better shot on Tuesday. And then looking at your weekend getaways, if you're planning any big trips this weekend. It's looking like we're going to have uh, some pretty nice conditions across the southeast. If you're headed down to Destin, I'm jealous. 74 uh, there on Sunday looking nice. 75. Yeah, you got the cloud cover on Monday, but maybe you take that extra day off with it being a little bit warmer down there on the beach. 78 in Gatlinburg there for Monday. You see 80 in Charleston. Uh, maybe if you're headed off towards uh, the beach there closer to Charleston, could be pretty nice there. And 82 down towards Savannah could be nice in their direction as well. Or if you're just headed up to the lake there on Lake Lanier, all the rain fall really helped to bring those water levels right back up there. And then finally, taking a look at your Georgia State Park forecast. It is looking like a good day for hiking tomorrow. Just going to be a little bit cloudy. Should still be stunning for all the waterfalls with all the rain that we've had this month, whether you're heading to Tallula Gorge, whether you're headed up towards Cloudland Canyon, Amicalola Falls, all those spots should be nice. A little cool in the morning there, 30s and 40s, but we warm into the 50s to 60s for the afternoon throughout the day tomorrow. So all in all, a pretty good week ahead of us. I'm going to bring back up the seven day forecast. Don't forget that you can get updates on the weather whenever you're on the go with the 11 Alive app. Let me go ahead and actually bring that up there for you uh, so you can get all the information on it too. It's giving you live information on the screen right here. That's 51 degrees for today right now. That's what the current condition is. We head throughout the afternoon. Temperatures rising into the 60s. That's the actual hourly forecast for our, our Sunday. Live looks at the radar could be really useful if you're going to be out and about on Tuesday when the rain comes in. And then of course you can get updates like the one you're getting right now, right there at your fingertips from your phone. And if you want to get it at your fingertips at home, you can get it on the 11 Alive Plus app. That's on Roku, Fire TV, and Apple Plus, uh, or excuse me, Apple TV. Uh, you can get the 11 Alive Plus app, and you can get those updates right at your fingertips. It's not just extended weather information like what you're watching right now. You can also get extra news coverage on things that are a little bit more important to you. Let's say you saw a story on 11 Alive, and you said, well, I kind of want to see more about it. Some Sometimes we post longer form stories right there on the page and you can also let's say you wake up early in the morning you miss Chester McNeil's forecast and it's uh, now eight nine o'clock and the show is already done but you want to go back and see what Aisha Howard Cheryl Preheim and what Chester McNeil were talking about that morning you can actually watch the newscast whenever it's um, more convenient for you. You don't have to wait for the noon show that then to then come on to find out what's going on. So again, the 11 Alive Plus at Roku, Fire TV and Apple TV. So I'll bring back up the seven day forecast. We'll have another update for you, of course, on Wednesday at 2.30. I hope everybody has a wonderful week ahead of them and we'll keep you updated on everything right here at 11 Alive.